Uh, call to order 707 is the time I have. Um, we'll start that off is, with any public well, comments. I'm sorry, I didn't want to lead and now I'm talking over you. <laughs> I just wanted to introduce my two people, but you were probably going to yeah, ask me. Here. I'll, I'll allow Carolyn to, to speak. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, thanks. Hi, um, oh. I'm Carolyn, Bike Walk Farmington again. Um, yeah, today's Jackson Lab Fair was a success. And um, yeah, I don't have any comments, but I'm glad to be here. Okay. Wonderful. We'll, we'll continue on then. Um, for new business, uh, DOT, this was kind of geared towards Rich's email. I don't know if you've all read the whole thing or not. But basically, Rich was at an event or something of that nature and uh, ended up talking with a, a member of the DOT here in Connecticut. Um, and he gave them some pointers and whatnot to push that um, jug handle project through. And it was something that uh, Rich mentioned that he was somewhat familiar with as well and that there are a couple different avenues where we could get some progress. Um, I'm more interested um, from a town perspective, getting the state more heavily involved in it. Um, just, I've been driving down that way a lot now that we're building the uh, roundabout on South Road in Two Mile. And every time I drive through there, I go, you know, let me, Maybe there's a good place over there for a sidewalk, and and I'm and I'm looking at the side of the road as as I'm going to the site, and and it's just a challenging area, and um, the amount of studies we would need would be we probably need at least a traffic study. Yeah, right? we, 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 we yeah we need we need we need two things we need yeah. a traffic study, uh, and we need probably. Uh, something, I don't know whether a full-blown signalization study, but something. Something that would give us the timing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because I think, I think that's honestly, from, from DOT's point of view, the critical issue is, yeah. is, is, is traffic flow as it relates to the timing of something that would be potentially pedestrian activated, which is going to be a bitch getting through their department. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, uh, and cause it's, it, it, that, ultimately this is, this is a pedestrian safety issue. It's not so much a bicycle issue. Bicy bicycles can get across, uh, you know, a pretty wide swath pretty quickly. Uh, but the last thing we need is pedestrians mowed down there because people, uh, you know, do speed up and slow down fast there. Yeah, and especially coming off that uh, 84 off ramp, people. That's I mean, that's I've seen people problem. go through the red. Yeah, at I don't know, Jeff, 40, 50 miles an oh, hour, 55, 60 sometimes. Yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah, I mean, people are howling down that hill. Yeah, it's and, uh, from my experience, it's almost as bad. It's almost as bad, if not worse. People getting on. People, I call yeah. it, smell the highway coming, and they speed yeah. up way down and just zoom. Um, when we work jobs out there, it's it's pretty hairy because the cars just don't slow down. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't mean, they do a traffic study when <clears throat> they looked at that whole intersection and said, hey, here's a bunch of options, and it's important to do this? And, I mean, that was, what, 2017 or something? Uh, the construction project was 2016, um, so the study was likely 2014. Okay. Um, uh, Ten years. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, that that area of focus was, I believe, it was from. It must have been from South Road to Farmington Center. It would. It think, wouldn't have gone past South Road. I don't think it went past South Road. Yeah. In my in my memory, I recall that was reading one of those it. intersections, sir. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, but apropos of that, you know, the average daily volume has changed. I'm sure. Uh, it it likely I, has increased since then. 
Yeah, I don't um, see how you know, I don't see how it went down. <laughs> I know I know people like to throw COVID at the at the average traffic volumes, but I I got to tell you we're we're back to normal. I I, I, I have traffic, to think so. If not if not higher. Yeah, I have to think so. I don't think that's apocryphal. I think that's pretty pretty accurate. Yeah. Um So anyway, uh, I bring all this up as a precursor to, you know, let's let's look at some of the pots of money out there for. Uh, for some, for some studies, but you know we've got to uh, engage the right couple of people at DOT yeah. because we don't want to program a study that that isn't isn't what they're going to ultimately want. Yeah. Right. Because uh, you yeah. know my con my my concern is that you know we could we could spend sixty eighty a hundred grand on a study easily these days absolutely uh, if and, not you know, more. oh well I, I look i i just i just signed off on a study for three miles of trail uh out in the middle of nowhere in eastern connecticut for three hundred and twenty thousand dollars yeah the design study so it, it gives you an idea of what the consultants are getting these days and uh and they can get it because there's only x amount of consultants out there so, so for the, I mean, the engineering is one part of it, and then well, the other part be, is the traffic study. Is, but I mean, wouldn't the DOT own the traffic study and the traffic volumes? They they lay out the measurements. Yeah. You know, little rubber hoses and. Absolutely. Yeah. I and mean, I think that that'd be that their money. Be, uh, it, not necessarily. We could have Krog do it. We could have DOT okay. do it. There's there's a bunch of avenues to do it. It's just I mean, I'm thinking because there's there's some swing money available through Krog that maybe that's our opportunity. Yeah. But again, we've got to go back to DOT and it's got to come from the town. Yeah. Uh, Dylan, right? So yeah. yeah. So, so the town the town has to say, what do you need for us to package together uh, a comprehensive uh, 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 you know, redo essentially. Uh, you know, coming coming out of Farmington mm -hmm. Avenue, getting across the Jug Handle, uh, and getting out toward West Hartford. And, you know, what yeah. what what do you need to see from us? Yeah, the the only thing I would be weary of is I, I'm not I'm oh. I don't think I can go through lots of for that. Uh, maybe. You might. But if if I have if I have to go to through lots of, to do that, then it eats away at the money that I can win for general road projects. True. Yeah. True. Now, uh, one of the one of the other avenues is uh, uh, I, I I am pleased to announce, uh, and it did have something to do with me and some other folks, but uh, uh, the recreational trails program is going to be ten million dollars this coming year. Oh really? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it, was, it just passed through the budget the other day. Um, in fact, ten years for the next two, uh, 10, 10 million for the next two years, for twenty four and twenty five. So that money is available, and and we specifically put that money uh, out for design. Uh, so if you were to package that, for instance, with a trail coming out of Farmington Village, uh, you know, I th I would think that would score extremely favorably. So. Yeah. So think about that as well. Uh, or, or, anyway, or, I, 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 I mean, I, I think there's money. I just want to, we have to go back to, and I can't remember whether it's Rob, Rob DeLuise, or I can't remember exactly who he's talking to at, at DOT, but I know all these guys. Yeah. Uh, and we just need to make sure that we don't sign up for something that's not going to be enough or something that doesn't address all their issues, right? Yeah, we'll have to be selective about it. And I'm, I'm thinking maybe packaging from a, a trail point, point of view from the MDC trails over towards the West Hartford line. And maybe that gets us to or close to the Jug Candle intersection. Well, I think if we think of this project and 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 you know Matt and Andrus and all of you guys, you know, let's let's put our heads together. But I'm thinking, you know, Farmington Village to the MDC trails. 
I really yeah, think. I, I, I mean, that, that's, I agree. That's we, we've got to do that because if we if we don't do this with this one, it's going to be another decade. Sure. Um, <laughs> At least <laughs> you know, and and so I'd rather have a bigger project and have it done in phases than you know get one part done and then say okay now let's do something else and you know before you know it you know the town's going to have some other big expenses and it'll get pushed out a while. And since the projects just take so long with DOT support, you know, let's let's get a big one in there and, you know, let them drive what we need. And then, you know, we can decide how to do it in phases. You know, the engineering, we could say, you know, what's our critical part? You know, I think going to, you know, West Hartford from the jug handle is a no-brainer. Yeah. Um, the jug yep. handle is critical getting that done i wouldn't want i wouldn't want to do a project that says let's go to the jug handle and leave it at that and do jug handle later um oh, no and in fact you know i think i think from a public safety point of view i don't i think i think we, yeah I, I don't i don't see us doing that i think uh, i think everyone everyone certainly at the town level and i have to think the police as well jeff would balk at that i mean we I, you know you we can't we can't build a side path along Farmington Avenue and dump people out of the, at, at that intersection. I just, I couldn't no. in, good, in good faith. Well, then, we'll, we'll also get the Connecticut um, Forest and Parks folks if we tie into um, the Metacomet right there at the jug handle. Yeah, and actually, so that's that, true. That yeah. gets all the walkers on board. And the I hadn't thought about that, but uh, uh, Eric Hammerling, by the way, uh, just left as executive director of Connecticut Forest and Parks. He's actually going to uh, deep as some sort of uh, muck, high muckety muck at, at deep. Yeah. Uh, so, so just write this down. Claire Kane is the interim director of Connecticut Forest and Park Association. But we should chat them up about that because the Metacomet does indeed go right through there. All right, Claire Kane. And they have they have money. Those guys. And and what organization was that? Connecticut Forest and Park Association. They're oh, basically, they're, they basically are the Blue Blaze Trail folks. And the Rec Trails program just gave them 440000 We give them a substantial portion of their budget. Okay. So they've got money. Um, yeah. But, but let's, so, so, Dylan, you know, if if you want to chat up DOT, uh, and and you want me on the call, I'm happy to do that. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's a practical matter. You pretty much know what what we need, what the town wants. I yeah, think. fairly certain. Um, yeah, I think I think our our next step for this project is going to be to um, talk with either someone else at DOT or the gentleman that Rich met and expressed interest in the project. I, I think those are our next steps. Yeah, in fact, now that I think about it, I think it was Bill Champagne we talked to. Y yes, it was uh, Mr. Champagne. And, I, and I, know him, I know him too, I've worked with him for years. Yeah. Uh, so, so, and ultimately, you know, uh, we can go through, uh, the bike pad office as well too. You know that's Anna Bergeron, uh, and she can yeah. direct us to where we need to go. But maybe, maybe we address an email to 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 Bill, Anna, and I'll think of a couple others. Maybe, maybe somebody in design, uh, maybe somebody from the design team uh, from the Plainville design team. That's uh, Scott Bushy. Yeah, he's he's the he's the the lead for the design team for Plainville and Southington. Yeah, I kind of want them to kind of accept the project before we go pushing them for design and everything. I yeah. want them to accept the studies because it, it benefits the state tremendously because of UConn right there. Oh, for a lot of reasons, quite yeah. frankly. I mean, not the least of which, by the way, you know, uh, West Hartford has been trying to connect yeah. itself for years yeah. on, on both ends and has had no success. Yeah, so... so. So that's a whole other, you know, part of the equation here. And 
I've talked to the, the mayor and I've talked to a couple of the, the elected officials in West Hartford and they're all excited about this. Yeah. Yep. Well, I think that's a good game plan moving forward and that's definitely something we can work on before the right. next meeting. Right. Let, I let's mean, try and set something I mean, up. You know, I, I think it's a practical matter. If if we if we really tried to push that, I, I think we could have some success. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, um, and you know, we've yeah. got enough time to get to a point where, and this is again, is this is negotiations with DOT, but yeah, among other things, we have to figure out, you know, what the scope uh, of, of this uh, design slash engineering study would be. Mm -hmm. uh, because it needs to go to bid. So, yeah. Uh, and the stuff is expensive. So we'll have to figure out where that money comes from. But I think that's so that's a different subject. Yeah, with with the conversation, it's probably worth bringing up um, Connecticut, um, our DOT's own CT bike ped plan. Um, mm -hmm. I sent an email out last month about that. And, you know, they've got Route 4 identified with different tiers, you know, tier one, tier two of, hey, we got to get this done immediately. Um, you know, tier one is right in front of the high school, you know, tier two is, you know, the whole run up, you know, to the jug handle. Yep. And, you know, according to their own standards, it's something that is important to them. You know, so if we point that out, you know, maybe they've already got a list of something and knowing that they've got government support locally, um, they could, you know, move that up as a, you know, as a shovel ready project instead of a, uh, we'll get to it. Well, without, uh, it doesn't meet that criteria yet, unfortunately. I wish it did, but it doesn't. Oh, you're, you're muted. No, I'm you. Yeah, I'm just hoping with, you know, if they're, if they know that they've got local government attention, you know, that they're going to get support from the town instead of the town. Oh, oh I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's, because that definitely, we need that for sure. Yeah. Um, but this really is at this point uh because what we, what we're what we've been hashing about is the scope of this what the actual scope is because that's critical the dot has to approve the scope uh and as soon as they do that we are off to the races basically then, then we can start talking to Krog and all these other people and get it on all these lists for funding. so so for the scope um are you guys thinking that we do we want to tie into the sidewalk on the northbound side of Route Four that goes, you know, from um, what is it, Mountain Spring? Because we, I'll, I mean, that's sketchy riding that on the road. Sidewalk's doable, but you know, we somehow need to get from there to the jug handle, you know, and is the scope that we want to do an off off road path to do there, or do we want well, to go I, ahead and? I mean, my my predilection for that area is some sort of side path. Yeah. But you know, the north side. Uh, oof, boy. Well, that's where we've got the sidewalk already, where it'll end. Yeah. No, I know. That's where the, unless we redo, redo the south side and we bench into you know the you know the mansion property that I think Alzheimer's Association bought. Um, yeah, they before, did. Before but, no, that's got that's got such a slope that that I would know be, you have to get benched and walled. Yeah, I don't know how you, I, that would be a pain in the ass. So on on the north the, side, once you get up to the flat part of Route 4, you got to cross anyways because we have a retaining wall there. Yeah, right. So I almost would rather go through that steep slope at the Alzheimer's place. Yeah. Well, the, the rule of thumb. on one side. Yeah, the rule of thumb is you pass where, where the traffic is slowest. Or, or where it's actually stopping. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, one one of the, one of the opportunities is is, you know, literally at High Street, quite frankly. Uh, you know, and just start at High Street because it's signalized. Yep. Yeah. It, the the project would probably be from there up, if high if if any of that sidewalk needed any anything, um, additional. Yeah, the other thing is that no one knows still what's going in at the old Parsons property. Uh, there was a meeting the other day about it. Um, 
I wasn't in it, but we might be getting something there. More so like a little park with some parking and park benches, stuff like that. Maybe a big Farmington sign. How about a, how about a pump track? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, it, um, it, would, it wouldn't be the worst use of that space for sure. Yeah, you know, I don't think it, the state will blast. sell it to us anymore. Well, I think that that ship may have sailed. Yeah, I I believe it it's no longer for sale from the state or up for grabs per se. I mean, I suppose for the right price they'll sell it, but uh, I you know who knows what that is. Yeah, yeah, I heard um, two million. That's what I heard too. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I think that's good progress on that. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to move to Bike League? Well, I kind of just have um, an overall question. It doesn't have to be long answer. Kind of maybe okay. toward Bruce, toward um, Dylan. Like, what what is connectivity going to look like? I, I'm just thinking of the schools because that's what it seems like each town is is trying to concentrate on. And how, how does that even happen in Farmington, or can it happen? Like, what does that even look like if it does happen? Like, so, how, how do we get there? Well, uh, uh, I'll, I'll start, and then I want to hear what, what, <laughs> what, 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 the, what the town wants to say. But, you know, traditionally, the, the, the safer to school concept or the school connectivity concept or whatever you want to call it, uh, really can't be the traditional paint and signs. Uh, it's just not safe enough for kids. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and really what you're looking at is you're looking at uh, buffered facilities or side paths, one or the other. Uh, and they've got to be correctly built, which means uh, that uh, in, in suburbia, uh, you're looking at one of two things, widening or narrowing a road, <laughs> one or the other. Uh, and, and, and anytime you're doing that, uh, you dig up a whole can of worms, not the least of which is, if you really want to do that correctly, then you've got to take little slivers out of front yards of a bunch of different people to, yeah, make, it, it would, to make it function correctly. Yeah. So are yeah. we saying it's not a realistic goal? No, it's doable. It's just, it's, 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 it's a heavy lift. It's well, doable. No soon. It's just, it's a question I get a lot, obviously, you know, from... Oh, yeah. I, and, and, you know, and I don't want to appear or sound cynical about this, but, but it's, um, uh, it, is, it is not, uh, for the faint of heart, politically, to be taking, you know, four feet of people's front yards in order to get to Irving Robbins, for instance. Yeah. And... Uh, it, it, it's it's so important though i mean if we're if we look at the league applications i mean that's a heavy scoring part of it it's huge um and if we want to encourage cycling to places not just for recreation i mean starting with kids is ideal um and yeah just like the jug handle being a heavy lift with dot i ideally we should look at each school and, you know, divvy it up and find a champion for each one in each school and say, hey, what, are, what do you want? What are, what's the ideal situation? And then we'll worry about how do we accomplish it? And if it means taking from front yards, well, maybe those get pushed to the very end of the project list, you know, until, you know, all the lower hanging fruit's done. But yeah, but we got to do but, it. But I mean, you bring up a good point because... If, if the town, you know, is serious about connecting a lot of these properties, particularly the high school, you know, Monteith Drive, I mean, it's crazy. You've got this huge ass new high school. I, I went over the other day. Uh, my son, James, is, uh, is the concrete salesman for Tilcon. So he's over there all the time pouring. And uh, he said, Dad, you got to go over. You know, he went to, he went to the high school too, uh, as did I. And, uh, Man, that thing's big. <laughs> yeah. Holy, 
Holy cow. <laughs> and he takes up that whole area. Yeah. Um, but I bring it up because, you know, it, it needs to be connected. I mean, it's just, it has to be. Uh, and, you know, Unionville, Unionville out should be connected. Yeah. Well, the high school's connected to the highlands through all the paths through the woods. Well, yeah, you, there's that. You do path. have the sidewalk that goes all the way down into Unionville. Yep. And it comes up right here. Yep. And that you does know, qualify, I, even though it really is a sidewalk. Yeah. I would say that it's actually fairly connected in terms of walkability. And then... What's yeah. not connected, though, is the other way. Yeah. So when we get this bridge built, thousand feet. Well, that's well. For instance, that's one way to connect it because yeah, New Britain, New Britain Avenue. Uh, you know, I think I think a lot of people, including traffic engineers at DOT, would agree that New Britain Avenue could could be the subject of a road diet uh, or some sort of a rebuild. Uh, it's, it's on our list. I'll tell you that much right now. It's on our list. It's on our short list. Um, for the high school connectivity, I mean, if, if you scroll a little bit to the east, um, those condos on the corner of Brickyard and Route 4, there's, yeah. there's no, in Lakeshore, there's no good way. Um, no, that's. That's difficult. That that no, area is we need we need a sidewalk basically from there to the high school. Um, yeah, or at least up to Knollwood, and then you're going up Knollwood and then cutting through the highlands. But I mean, ideally, we should be looking at how do we get a sidewalk going from Unionville or Farmington Village. So, um, Andres, you may remember I, I did bring that up a few meetings ago. And it's not easy. No, it's not. Um yeah. We did a gap study uh, a few years back. We have a we had a preliminary plan. We ended up finishing a design plan, um, and after I priced it out, we were just too much for the LOTSIP application. You know, but it, it'd be nice to have a list of hey, here's all the projects we want with a price tag associated with it, either in phases or whatever. And at least we have that list with the yeah. preliminary stuff done. And we could say, well, next year we want to tackle this, then we'll do this the year after. Um, you know, and I think it's okay to have projects that are too expensive on that list that aren't going to get done immediately, but knowing where it stands. Um, yeah. And, and how important it is, we might, we might, you know, get the will to do it when you know, here's a gap in Route 4 and, you know, maybe together with um, with the CT, DO, with Connecticut DOT, um, you know, they want in their bike pet initiatives, maybe, you know, I think connecting Unionville to Farmington Village to West Hartford, um, you know, once you've got sidewalks, now you can have families bike in there to go get ice cream or coffee or whatever, because um, Route 4 is only going to get more and more traffic. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I agree. I totally agree. Totally, totally agree. Yeah, that's typically how we operate. We we do have a list of projects that have preliminary work done. It's just when you go for the funding, we try and be at a, a point in the design where we know exactly what's happening. Um, a lot of these towns, and it, Bruce, you may be aware of this, um, but they often have to come back. I, I'll keep using LOTSIP because that's my favorite program. I use them a lot. Um, a lot of towns go back to LOTSIP and say, you know what, I need another, you know, my budget was a million, I need another 400 grand, which doesn't sound like a ton of money, but when you're increasing your budget by 40%, because you, actually, you went in with preliminary information only, no, it happens a lot. It's, in fact, yeah, it's, uh, not, it's not necessarily the best look. Yeah, so, no, in fact, Ter Terrafield 2, which is uh, the Canal Heritage Trail down 315 to Curtis Park in, yeah. uh, in Simsbury, uh, they've gone back to the well twice on that. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's not a good look. Yeah. Uh, that, 
the goal is one and done. We ask for the money. They say yes. We take it. We don't want to go ask for more. Um, yeah, but it does require said, it, it does require planning, and it does require uh, uh, doing this. Uh, you know, and, and and the point is well taken. Uh, it does need to be phased. Uh, yeah. It's going to be. It's just going to be expensive. It's also, you know, quite frankly, building a side path on a major uh, 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 state route. Uh, it's going to be invasive, and uh, it's going to require a lot of planning. Yeah, yeah. But we have we have this plan finished. It's priced out. Obviously, I'd have to update the pricing as things come up. Yep. Um, but it's ready to go. And we just came in over budget on what we are allowed to ask for through LOTSIT, which is the program that we were aiming to go for. And it could end up, you know, being uh, a Transportation Enhancement Act, you know, federal project. It very well could be. It could end up being a state project that they want to do. It, it could happen not by our hand. Well, they often do that. You know, they'll start out they'll yeah. start out with one funding source if they really want to have this. Uh, and they might move it or they may augment it with, you know, a, a additional tap funds from the next round. Uh, you know, the next federal round. Uh, is I think 26 money now, if I'm not mistaken. So that's for TAP, for the federal program. Yeah. Um, at any rate, you know, I, again, I, you know, it's just, it, it's it, one of the things it is, is it's incumbent on us to, to, to get, you know, to rub DOT, DOT's nose in this and make sure they know that the town, you know, wants this. So, so then let's take uh, West District just quickly. I'm not going to go through every school. West District is so close to the trail if you go behind the school, but you've got this deadly steep hill, which you, you cannot expect a child to, to pedal up and down, yet there seems like there has to be a way to well, get... They, they do have a trail run that goes back. It connects to Walnut. Right behind um, the school, right? It's a paved trail. Yeah, it's a paved trail. It goes, I think, I, I want to say horseshoe, but no. No, it I'm, does. I'm, it's, it's, it, it is, except yeah. when we were planning out the bike to school day for West District, we crossed that off. First of all, I thought there was a rule at the school that that there were no bikes to, to be on allowed on there. I could be yeah, wrong. Yeah, I think we discussed but, this in December, and that's not the case. That's bikes, not the case. Bikes can be on there, yeah. Okay, but for a, a third and fourth grader, it's uh, it's way too steep. It's I've lost control. You know, it's. But, Give them credit, Ron. They can do it. They can walk it. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, I but mean, it's, if if it's there, and you get to a steep part, I mean, we've all gone to hills that we couldn't ride up, and you walk up it. Um, I would hope that on the way down they know how to use brakes um it's you know or just kind of, i would hope that they can use brakes but you know at the bike to school day to union school there was i was sweet and there was literally a few kids there that had been on the bikes twice and thought it was a great idea to do a three or four mile bike to school in a crowd not being bicycle riders at all um you know, so you're always going to have some folks that, you know, are a little too ambitious. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Um, I, I just want to keep that in our line of, line of vision. But Ron, Ron, are you thinking that if, if it's town-owned property, do we need to flatten the trail out with some switchbacks? What? Is that what you're thinking? I'm, not, I'm probably not smart enough to figure that one out, but... You know, that, that's only one of the problems for, let's say, West District, because now then you have the whole Lake Garda side, which really the only access would be coming down Burlington Road and then get, getting on to West District, I guess. And yeah. so there's a lot that has to be eventually addressed. Yeah. If there's going to be connectivity. Burlington's going to get a bit wider, but it's not getting a sidewalk. Okay. Um, and that's mm -hmm. going to be next year. We'll start that. 
All right. We have, fund we have funding to rebuild and reconstruct uh, Burlington Road. Um, so from the town line to Doris Street is going to be 28 feet wide. From Doris to 177 is going to be 24 instead of 22. Oh, and is that is that going to be 11 in 11 foot wide? Um, 11 foot travel lanes. lanes. Okay. Yeah, 11 foot travel lanes. All right, so that's 45 feet. And yeah. so for that stuff, for us to call that a bike route, you know, at least for the league applications, what do we need to do? Do we need to just I'm not submit sure. it to Google and make it a green line on their map and then we're good? Or we can we could probably oh, oops. Uh I didn't want to do that. We could probably add it somehow to our existing mapping. I don't know if um I'll have to look at the complete streets and see if they define what a bike safe road is. Because I want to say it's 26 feet and up, which from Doris on, we won't get. Now, can you guys just uh, go over those distances again? Did you say it was going to be 45 feet way wide? No, no, no. 28. No. 28. Yeah. And you're talking about a 11 foot lane on each side. So that's 22 feet. Yeah, with a, a 28 foot width from town line to Doris and then Doris to 177 is going to be 22. It's 4,500 linear feet, just a bell. Okay, with the crap in the lane, now you're down to about a foot and a half of rideable space. Well, yeah, you can't. Foot foot lane. I, have, I have no more room to widen the road over there. Between utility poles, fire hydrants, properties. How loud are you? How wide are you allowed to narrow the lane for the cars? Okay, that has to do with uh, yeah. posted speed limit. But okay. the, I have to think the minimum would be ten feet. Yeah. Well, that foot on either side would be great. So that's twenty feet. So that's and ten foot's going to slow them down too. It Just does. It, it does. It feels faster, so people slow down. Yeah. No, ten feet does will, will slow traffic. Yeah, I mean that that foot might be a a big difference in the rideable area because that road does see a lot of cycling traffic. I mean that's that's a third more shoulder to ride on. You can check out and see what ten ten feet looks like. Yeah, you know, I'll have to look know. at the plans. Uh, we just got DOT comments back. Uh, I think Friday last week. It might oh, be good. worth. It might be worth doing if you can yeah. do it, uh, Shannon. And this is. I mean, this is kind of the time. Time to do it. Yeah. Uh, like like um, I said, I I would have loved to bring the whole road to just a standard twenty eight or twenty six, but I, from Doris on, you, we don't have the room. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So, but okay, all right. Go ahead. No, I guess my point was just to kind of keep the schools in mind and being an ultimate goal to try to yeah. connect. So oh, no, for each school, I mean, should we be going to the school principals or board of ed or PTAs or, you know, to find a champion for each school to, I mean, honestly, the only way this will get done is if you divide and conquer. We can't do it all. Um, you know, should we be looking to find a champion at each school? What do you mean? Um, but then what, what would their role be? I mean, the role would be getting folks involved to say, hey, what's the priorities for school A, for school B, for school C? They could look at maps. They can have the discussions, um, almost like a subcommittee of this. And, you know, say, okay, here, you know, for West District, you know, we want to connect to this neighborhood, this neighborhood, and that neighborhood. This one's almost done. That one needs a lot of help. You know, and then for, you know, Ron, like you said, you didn't want to go through each school here. But if you've got parents, I mean, you're, each school is bound to have a bunch of biking parents. PTO. Um, and the PTOs. They do. Mm -hmm. You know, and so... If, I, I, I have to think it would be more valuable to have uh, these connections, uh, you know, mapped out uh, on, a, on a town plan, 
yeah. Uh, you know, I, also, I think we I think we have a sidewalk plan somewhere. Yeah, I, I think I'll, there's I'll a sidewalk. Plan, although I don't recall, <laughs> to be truthful, what's on it anymore. It was a while yeah. ago. I think I I, I want to say I recall seeing a map for that that had all the sidewalks on on it. So I just counted those topo lines. That's about. 60 feet of vertical, which isn't really a lot. That's like one switchback. Yeah. Okay, and then I guess there's the whole, if we're talking about sidewalks, then we're changing our whole way of, of teaching kids how to ride. And, you know, do they, do you ride on a sidewalk? Because every intersection with a driveway is potentially dangerous. So I think that has to be discussed further too. I, I don't think there's any way around it. I mean, you're always gonna have the busy roads that you're gonna be on sidewalks. I mean, okay. honestly, frankly, riding back from the Union School back to the Highlands, when I didn't have my taillight on after the bike to school ride, I took the sidewalk. Um, you know, cause I'm not gonna take the chance of getting rear-ended by somebody rushing to work. Um, you know, so on the busy, at least the roads that have double yellow lines on it, I would think it'd be safe and encouraged to have kids on the sidewalk. I mean, Ron, you got a good point of looking at every single driveway and that's how I'm teaching my son to do it. You know, but you know, I sure as heck I'm not comfortable with him riding on route four. No. And he's one of the most capable, you know, biking kids that I know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah, this is, Definitely part of a much, you know, we need a bigger discussion on this at some point. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, the town, you know, at some point should consider updating a comprehensive bike ped plan, for instance, which which would have a lot of this on it. That's a good idea. Do uh, we have a bike ped plan? That I don't would think be the complete streets plan, would it not? Yeah, that's the complete streets plan, although. I thought that was just aspirational for new developments, and that was up. Yeah, it's not really a transportation plan, per se. I mean, it summed up, to, is it basic? In, in Farmington, I, I believe uh, Russ creates like a 10-year plan or, or, you know, whatever it is, or the town council helps him create a 10-year plan on what they want to see done throughout the town. And I think that's that's how you would have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Dylan, can you find and share that to the group? Yeah, I can. I can search for that. And, I, yes. and I'm thinking that might be a great idea to find out when that's up for renewal, and then we get our, you know, our important projects in there, and then at least, you know, there's more town council visibility with it. Um, some budgeting for studies and whatnot. And then, you know, we're not just blind, blindsided or just asking the town, hey, can we have this? Can we have that? And the town says, sorry, we can't because we've already budgeted for all this other stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we can look into that. Uh, just on the school subject real quick, I'm hoping, I think Kyle shaves the, well, Andres knows him. Uh, he he might have some interest in in joining this board, so it's just a matter of tricking him into it a little more as the board of ed, as the uh, that would be fantastic. Representative, and yeah. Maybe with school being out, you know, maybe he's got a little bit more bandwidth mm -hmm. in the summertime. Yep. Yeah. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. But we've been wanting to fill that for a while. That would yeah. be amazing. That would work great for our bike league application. Yeah, it, um, it would. It, it would be a help. Uh, yeah. Do, do you know if CJ uh, uh, has gone to the uh, town council about uh, expanding this board? I, yeah, I do not that? Know. Okay. Because with the amount of subcommittees that we need, well, I've already. It, yeah, but it needs it, CJ. It. Need, CJ just needs to go to the council and say, let's bump it up to 11 members and let's rename it and it shall be done. Drop okay. the gavel and... Yep. 
Well, at least that's how I picture the town council working. <laughs> no, I would. I would. I, I think. I think you're correct. I, I think. I think once it gets on the agenda. And it's properly, you know, announced and explained. I can't imagine why they'd say no. Okay, Dylan, can you can you ask yeah, CJ uh, to do yeah, that? Yeah, I, I plan on touching base with CJ after the meeting, anyway. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep. All right. Um, I wanted to touch upon our bike league subcommittee. I know Ron's volunteered. Carolyn. Um, Carolyn. Be happy and to just if I can interject Bruce. again very quickly. Um, I think most of you know that we have taken on a, uh, a Farmington High senior now. She was a junior. Yep. And she's working on her Girl Scout project. And she was with us at Jackson Labs today. And she has such an interest in bike safety and, and all of that. So as part, she needs to do a project that is working on something that's sustainable, which trying to improve, you know, Farmington bike safety and working on this application would be part of that. Yeah, uh, goal. I'd be happy to have her in some of our, really? our uh, Thanks. meetings that are in between these. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna. So then how do we, off air, so, we plan? Yeah, tomorrow I'll send an email out to all of us. Yeah, okay. Um, and we'll try and schedule something uh, during the day, and I'll, I'll reserve a um, a conference room at Town Hall. Um, okay. We can we can brainstorm there. I'll have the um, the 2018, 2019, 2018 uh, application. I'll have a draft of the twenty twenty three application, um, and we'll just have access to all of our files at Town Hall too. Do you uh, do you want me to get uh, Avon's uh, 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 recent winning application? They just they just were given bronze. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's someone who's silver in Connecticut. Simsbury. They're similar, Simsbury. They're similar to us. Simsbury. Simsbury. Is Simsbury would be the prototype. Yeah, I would and love I've got, to see I've got Simsbury. I think Simsbury. I sent you. I th I sent you Simsbury. I'm, I'm sure I did, because yeah. I was involved. I was involved in that one. Yeah, you might have, or, or maybe maybe Bruce Sear has it. But um, yeah, maybe not you. I probably I probably sent it to Bruce. But uh, uh, but I've got Simsbury's last silver application, and by the yeah. way, they just they just re-upped their application, like literally sent it in just now. Yeah, um, because when you click Connecticut, I can look at like a quick sheet, but I can't. Here, let me share my screen real quick. Um, and this will be quick. I'll keep this quick. So as you can see here on the screen, I can I can view other towns, like here. I keep moving this before us. Like here's Farmington's like quick sheet of how we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this is our scoring card. But I can't see um I can't see Simsbury's scoring card. That's all. That's that's that's, that's, that's because I, yeah, I, I I've got Simsbury somewhere. Yeah. Bruce, I thought New Haven got uh, gold. No, I thought they were the only gold in the state. We have no gold. No golds. They got they got special special recognition for silver, but they didn't get didn't get gold. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple of gold businesses, but that's it. And a gold university, Yale. Yeah, and a lot of people would claim that uh, New Haven's silver is because of uh, Yale's gold. Probably. Uh, we we actually beat a lot of their stats in their quick sheet. Yeah. And we're bronze. But, so. but I honestly think we have a good chance at silver. I really do. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. after I didn't before, but after looking at their scorecard compared to ours, I, I, I actually think we might have a good shot at it. I think we do. We've got yeah. a lot of trail. We've got a lot of good stuff going on. You know, the big thing that that, you know, the LAB likes to see is a change in uh, uh, the bicycle commutation, uh, you know, yeah. mode share. And, and, and well, all of us, including Simsbury, you know, have a lousy, you know, commutation number. It's just, it's just difficult in suburbia. It, it's, it's hard to get people to ride to, to work. You know, obviously Rich is rare breed going all the way to East Hartford. Go, go rich. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, there aren't too many riches around. Yeah. We have Matt, too. Matt rides in, right? Yeah. You ride to work, Matt? Where are you yeah. going to? You're mute. Well, we can't hear you. <laughs> Maybe Matt. that's a good thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I commute up to the Connecticut Fire Academy in Windsor Locks and then uh, down to the uh, CPAT Center in Meriden on Route 15. Uh, those are good rides. Yeah, 22 miles each way. Yeah. Yeah, and then I've, <clears throat> I've been trying to ride to work once a week um, to South Windsor. And that's 22, 23. Yeah. You know, those are good distances. Bike path north into Simsbury, then up over past Hubline, 185 that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough if you have a windy day coming home when you're tired. Oh, yeah. I'm always looking for that tailwind and ne never get it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Back okay, to ride, good. riding so, up to uh, Windsor Locks tomorrow for for class. So. Yeah. All right. Okay. <clears throat> um. So I'd like to move on to education now, just to keep things moving. Um. So I talked with uh, Rose Ponte, uh, who is our um, economic developer here in town. Um. And she has a newsletter that goes out to businesses. So I asked her, hey, can I, you know, squeeze something in there about maybe getting a couple businesses signed up for, you know, bike-friendly business and, and you know, hopefully get somewhere with it. She said, absolutely. She said, just keep it short and sweet, maybe like two to three sentences max, and then say, uh, for more information, you know, follow this link. So... I think we're going to do something like that um, if somebody wants to write it up. You know, it has to be inviting. It can't just be like, hey, you have nothing to lose, you know. But, um, you know, make it appealing to someone that owns a small business because those are the people that typically do it. So is this a, is this a hard copy newsletter or with links like uh, email? Um, I'm not sure. Really I, I think the it's link. email. I'm pretty sure it's email. Right, Bruce. To have the link for the application would be, yeah, that yeah. Way yeah. See exactly what. What yeah, it I is. put the, I put the link through to the application, uh, and, and yeah. just basically do you know they've the preamble on the LAB's website. We could we could use almost all of that. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, the other really good one. Uh, is uh, I know Steve Mitchell has been talking to people because he's he's one of the few Mitchell Auto Group is one of the few golds in the state. Yes, they and, are. And, and he's been trying hard to. He's he's one of my best friends, so I can ask him what he, what he writes if you want me to do that. Yeah, I guess it couldn't hurt, right? And then of course to start out to start with town hall and start with. You know, even Farmington Police Department, the library, to get the bike racks. Yeah, bingo. Yeah, for the, for the newsletter, I mean, we, we can go friendly. ahead and do like one of those Bitly short links, um, and you know, we could create an internal page, you know, for that we could have on our, you know, um, BAC web page. You know about getting you know our own splash page that takes it about you know getting bike friendly businesses you know what the benefit is here's the link here's well you know here's an example of a couple other people you know kind of you know to make it easy for them to just say yes yeah i feel like I, you have this all figured out andrews um 
let's vote on who we should give this to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I've been taking a, a good look at our uh, website for our committee, um, just because I know it needs an overhaul at some point soon, um, at least an update, if that. Um, but probably at the next meeting, I'll be ready to bring that forward to the group um, and we can start doing more with it. Okay, because if we do vote in a certain member who I think might be uh, here listening, she's very good at that kind okay. of thing too. Mm -hmm. But we just need to get her on the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so before we go to old business, I don't know if any of you know, but I've been doing research about crosswalks for the past month. And I finally came out with a, in fact, Rose is giving me a page or something on Explore Farmington to, to write the column. And, and this one is about crosswalks. So I've been visiting a lot of crosswalks. And this is kind of, kind of toward Jeff, maybe a little bit. Now, probably a lot, but I know there's no yes or no answer. I'm just curious on your thoughts. I've been reading a lot about um, enforcement and actually like stopping speeders. I saw it happen in Canton where a guy went through when they flew after and, and stopped him. I'm just like, are there any plans to, I guess, especially in Unionville, to just say, hey, I don't know if an uh, officer on a bike would do that or just ticket people <laughs> for disobeying the, the law. Well, uh, certainly, certainly they, the chief and that would be, um, you know, he would listen to whatever you're trying to do um, in whatever kind of complaints. Um, you know, anytime we get complaints, they try to, you know, there is a traffic person that gets assigned to do things like that. Um, you know, oftentimes, you know, if you're trying to catch a car, it's probably easier to catch a car with a car as opposed to a bicycle trying to, trying to grab somebody that goes through a, uh, someone down the crosswalk. Um, I know right now, you know, um, you know, and it's historically been the biggest complaints that we always have is speeding. So speed enforcement is one of the things that gets the majority of the time mm -hmm. for guys doing stuff. But there are other things that, you know, we get detailed too. And it's a matter of, um, they actually call them selected enforcement areas where they've gotten a certain number of complaints from residents. And so that gets put on the board and at roll call and, you know, the guys in those districts are asked to kind of hit those areas for whether it be a stop sign complaints or speeding or whatever. So, and that's the way to kind of address that is, you know, if people are bringing it to their attention and making noise about violations, then that's usually how that gets brought up to the top, at least for a while. Okay. All right. If you do get a chance to take a look, I have an embedded... Um... I guess it was, it's been done across the country. Uh, it's a whole law enforcement thing with plain clothes officers. I don't know. They call them decoys, but they don't like to call them, them that. And I guess they're able to stop a lot of cars. And they, some of them were on bikes. That's the only reason why I brought it up. But it, it's in my article if you go to Bike Walk Farmington, Connecticut on Facebook. Um, it's pretty comprehensive. <laughs> Sound like I'm promoting myself. I'm really not. Just like trying to make things product. safer. <laughs> sorry. Um, no, it's fine. Sorry about that. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, so I would contact the traffic um, officer yep. or the chief? Yeah, there's a traffic officer. I think you gave officer, me the Officer Carew. She's new. She took over for. Um, Officer Frank, who retired. Okay. C A R R U T H. Thank you so much. Okay. 
Speaking of crosswalks, do you guys know when the lights are going to get turned on on the crosswalk of Route 4 um, just west of the high school? Uh, no, that's a state project. Um, I know that they, the way that that project was running is, I mean, they, they started up by me in Ellington and they worked down. Um, so they first installed all the concrete and then they moved to the next location and did that concrete. And then they came back and did the electrical and it sounds like they did half the electrical or, or something. I'm not sure when they're going to turn on. That, okay. that is that is traditionally how they do that. They, they and then they'll come in and they'll put all the heads on at the same time. Yep. So yeah, I you know I can probably find out maybe. That's uh, that's a region four project, right? Yep, district four. Let me see if I can. I, I might I might be able to find. I might not too. Yeah. Let me yeah. see if I can. Why? We could probably yeah. use credit for that for our bike application too. You know, hey, here's one more thing we I was for yeah, I was planning on using it for credit, and then I was also planning on using the new um, the new crosswalks that they're going to install on uh, Knollwood and uh, Wawasa as well, yeah. and then um, Perry Street. Yeah, and don't don't forget the main, don't forget the Main Street crosswalks too. Yes. Those two, thank you, Bruce. That we did, we did those. Yeah, I know you did. Yeah, yeah. that's why. Yeah. <laughs> they look great, but they act as speed bumps, <laughs> not no, by design. Now people actually notice them. Yeah, yeah. If you're driving on Route 10, you you'll notice that they're they're all raised a little like a hair. Again, not by design. They were supposed to be flush, but that's how it ended up working out. Can I say one more thing and promise not to yell at me? I promise. Um, so I, won't, in, I won't promise. <laughs> so the in crosswalk sign, all we need is written approval by the Office of the State of Traffic Administration, and it's been done to get that, which could reduce ped crashes by 25% and be taken out for the winter time. Is that um, the state taking it out, or is that us taking it out? Oh, God. I don't know. I don't know. No, that would be... I don't know. Is this, well, is this one of the one of the in-road ones? One of the center yeah. of the road ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't... They don't uh, well. There's one in front of St. Mary's, I think, on Route 4, right? Don't they have one there? Yeah, it's, the, there. the speed limit there is a fraction of what it is where you want to put one. Yeah. It's going to last for two days, Ron. If it's bolted into the ground, yeah, someone's yeah, going to. You, the, you the, know, the sign gets gets broken off. It's 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 on a spring, but they end up breaking, and then they fly into any direction. They take about six good hits, and then they boomerang into somebody's car. Yeah, or somebody's I, I, face I, waiting for the crosswalk. Yeah, I how just. Are I, so, how are they so popular and 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 recommended? Like, They're recommended on on like those twenty mile an hour yeah. roads, yeah. But tw in, in front of schools, tw tw 25 and less. They're rec they're, they're recommended for school zones, Ron. Yeah. All right, and they and they work in school zones because you've got twenty or twenty five mile an hour flashers out. Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 they work because people will slow down for school zones mostly. <laughs> Um, but you're, 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 I, I really would caution that you're trying to put a square peg in a round hole on that. I just, I don't see it functioning for more than a few days. All right. And I understand why you want to do it. I get it. Don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, the, the Debbie Downer on this. I, I, I agree there needs to be, you know, more there if we can do it, but I don't, I'm not so sure that's the uh, solution. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll move on to old business. Um, Ron, I have to ask you, how did, how did the meeting go after I left uh, on Monday night? Oh God, do we have to relive this? You don't have to, just a simple yay yeah. or nay. So I thought, 
I thought that the president, Bruce, what's her name? Barbara was going to be in touch with you. Uh, I've only been talking with uh, uh, Amy. Oh, no, okay. but no, no, no. Well, th they're thrilled about that. Uh, but with the bench situation, yes. Yeah. You're talking about the water fountain for uh, everyone who... who, who oh, wasn't okay. There. Well, you should you you two should back up. So the first thing is is the bench, which was which was approved, and I'm going to help with that just to make sure that because I'm local and uh, I've I've been putting benches in for the Farmington Valley Trails Council for yeah and twenty, thank you 20 for, something for years. Out. So yeah. uh, so and I'm happy to work work with you guys on that. The part of this I didn't hear, and what I did want to hear was what what the conversation was regarding the water fountain. Okay, so the water fountain, I believe, I believe that they would like uh, a lesser model without the doggy feeder. And anyway, it, it was around 8,000 or, or 7,000 something. They were supposed to send you the picture and the, uh, and. Uh, I have it up. I, I have it right here. You do? They, yeah, they want that 7,500 one. Well, it's, I'm not sure if I'm it's yeah. basically the same thing, but without the dog pull. Well, I'm not supposed to be the one delivering the news, though. That's okay, Ron. Well, I don't know. I want to get in trouble. You're you're not in trouble. I just get in <laughs> advance. <laughs> I mean, for, you know, there must be a reason why it didn't get sent to you yet. I, I wouldn't know. Yeah. I wouldn't either. Um, I, I can wait on it until I hear yeah. from them. Please. Yeah. And yeah. I will send an email out. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so send an email to Barb Collins. She's no, she's great, no. but you know she's a practicing lawyer. She's busy as hell, so it's entirely possible she got doing something else. But uh, yeah, uh, if 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 if, if Farmington Valley Trails Council is interested, that then you know they'll get on this eventually. Oh, we've had Bruce. We spent an hour and fifteen minutes at the at the meeting. What Monday night? Yeah, yeah. It was Monday. it was Monday night. Yeah. Okay. And Dylan Excellent. was Dylan was a part of it. Yeah. Uh, good. So yes, I think we're much closer than. Okay, and and did they nix the dog bowl one altogether? I I believe so. I I okay. yes, because I think I, I just one was like just bring your yeah. collapsible bowl and fill it up. Yeah. Well, I think what they I think what they're thinking of is something more similar to the one that we put in at Sperry Park in Avon. Which I is think that could be it. Uh, I think that's yeah. I think that's why they went that route. Uh, and it was what a three thousand dollar difference. I think yeah, it's uh, like twenty seven hundred bucks. It's a two thousand dollar difference. And yeah, you know, our port. Our, I guess their thing was that you know we we've got other projects and they're not made of money like the southern portion, right, Bruce? I mean, it, true. Yes. So the, the Farmington Canal Rails Trail Association has, I want to say, well, I know because I'm, I, I go to the, at some of those board meetings. They've got, I think, one hundred eighty thousand dollars in the bank just lying yeah, around. Yeah, substantially more than. than yeah, more. yeah. So. The, the Farmington Valley Trails Council, I think, has thirty. So it's a little, it's a, it's a little bit different. Okay, fair enough. All right. Yeah. I'll so that forward. you'll, I'll, I'll take care of that. Right. Um, but the good news is hopefully there's going to be a water fountain, which Bruce will tell you we've been, that's been on the plan, for, the water forever. Is forever. Yeah, that, that's what um someone mentioned at the meeting. 15, 15 years, I'll bet. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. So there's a lot of excitement um, about that. Yep. Uh, if I can ask you this as part of that girl scout project i'm wondering if we had if we so she needs to do something that's going to stay around so we were thinking about a customized bike rack for the police department slash community center if we found like a steel builder or someone who builds them because there would have to be a building process for her to be a part of it how hard or easy would that be to get approved? 
Um, I can I can run it by Russ um, and uh, Jim Russ base in our highway super because it would be them putting it in. Um, ask well, that, I think ask Russ who would ultimately approve it. You know who would approve the design. Who would approve the design? I I could probably do that. Oh, okay. Uh, but as far right. as saying yeah, we'll put it in that that would be Russ. Okay. okay. I just okay. I didn't know it would be like even a a big deal because. Well, I got to tell really you, if you could be one there, if you're doing a custom design or something like that, it it, it might actually, you know, want to go on a poured pad. Yeah, it it needs to be on a poured pad. That's it. Really, thing. it really should be because they last a million times longer if you do that. Yeah. And I and um, and what we try to do is we try and minimize the amount of time that the guys have to get off the mowers and weed yeah. whack. Yeah, absolutely. So if they can, yeah. if they can, if they can mow around the pad, that's what we try and do. It's yep. all about minimizing time spent doing routine maintenance. Yep. For us, that's what we. The look bigger at. the pad, the less lawn to mow. Just sell exactly. it that way. That too. Absolutely. Yep. And if she's going to do a custom one, it. And, and we put it in front of a town building, I would I would probably suggest going with, you know, maybe the, the high school mascot should be on it or, you know, something like that. Something that ties it into the town. It would absolutely the, be, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and then, does anyone here know of any steel builder type people? Yeah, I could find out. Okay. We, we, we've done some custom ones. I don't remember who the fabricator was off the top of my head, but uh, th there are people that do that. One of the ways you can do it is have them fabricate the sides and the actual guts, you know, the, the, the tines or whatever they're called. It's just a standard purchase order and you bolt it all together. Okay, because she would have to go through the fundraising process first through Scouts, Girl yep. Scouts, and, yep. and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah, maybe maybe she could buy a standard one like you're saying, Bruce, and then they do kind of like an insert on the side if, if it's like an arch. They can do yeah, an that's... insert on the side with maybe like the town logo or, or town seal. Yep. And then on the other side, you know, I don't know, Girl Scouts of America. Okay, I just have to find out what the guidelines are as far as her being a yep. part of it. You know, it's one thing to order stuff. It's another thing for her to actually be maybe hands-on with someone who who can... Uh, if she wants to pour the pad, she can pour the pad. Yeah, we'll get her out, <laughs> we'll get her out there uh, uh, with... Uh, I can get Tilcon to come over and pour the pad. Uh, I got them to donate the concrete for the, uh, uh, for the one we just put in in Suffield. Okay. Yeah, that would be great, Bruce. And, and and it would be close to the road, so they don't have to go far. Yeah, well, actually, the, the one in the one Suffield, they had to pre-pour and, and haul it out because they, they couldn't get a, a mixer in. Really? That's interesting. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. But in this case, they could just, you know, pull up to the bumper and just, you know, pour it. So um, keep that in mind. But let's... Uh, she should run, so she should get all the parameters for this. I'm fully aware of of the of the Boy Scout Eagle Scout program because we've done a ton of those over the years. No, nope. I'm not. I'm really not familiar with the Girl Scout program. It's, so. it's basically the same type of thing because I'm familiar with. I, I I was a Boy Scout, so yeah, you know, I'm familiar with all that too. Um, yep. and it's it seems very similar, where it's a service project. Um, something that's sustainable through, you know, time. Yeah, I got to Life Scout. I, I was, I was sure I was going to be an Eagle Scout, and uh, I was that uh, close. Yeah, and, and 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 suddenly, somewhere around age sixteen, I I found out about uh, warm beer and girls, and that was it. Yeah, well, I have a forty-year-old instead of my Eagle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't go that far. <laughs> yeah. 
but you know, it may not even be a bike rack if 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 it's you know. I'm just trying to find something for her because she wants it to be bicycle related. Yeah, no, it's a good, it's a it's trail a, related. Yeah. No, it's a good idea. And and again, you know, it it it's this you know building you know bike ped in, infrastructure in town is something that we want to do. That's, mm -hmm. that's yeah. Um, I think that's it from me. Yeah. Uh, one thing, um, Dylan, I can actually email you this. Same thing with the sign. So Bruce Avon wants to put in the same sign in their parking lot, not the river trail sign, but the, uh, the canal heritage. Oh yeah. Logo, with yep. kind of that bridge with the wheelchair and the, Yep, and, and you the have walking. those specifics for all that. Um, I'd have to dig them out of something. Um, I think I have a detail on on a on an old set of plans. Okay. Um, but I will I will warn you that um, with working with the sign person for our roundabout project, they wanted a file type that was much much higher quality than what we have for yeah. things like that. They probably want they probably want a, a three three hundred DPI and rasterized. Yeah, just, pretty much. So and and, and, and I would I would that. bet I would bet none of us have that. I, I think I may have that artwork somewhere, but I don't think it's that good. No, no. I I I gave it to Ron in an email. Well, that was back. a different oh. sign. Yeah. Oh, but uh, no, that was the same sign, wasn't it? No, because there's the river trail sign, which is the, well, the, the rectangle. The, the river trail sign is the is really that artwork is really old. That's like to, almost thirty years old. That artwork. Yeah, yeah. The Anyways. sign I'm talking about is is it's like a little rock bridge. Yeah, and it has a wheelchair and a bike rider and a walker on the. Yeah, trail. no, I'm, I'm, I'm I, I know which one you're talking about. I just, I thought that was the one I sent you. Sorry. No, you sent me the other. Um, one. Yeah, yeah. Well, then I'll, I'll, I'll grab the other one and send that to you as well. But awesome, thanks. Like, like I said, it's, it's a poor quality. Mm -hmm. Which will, I hate to say, it's their problem, but they'll have to go from there with whatever we give them. Yeah. Right. I mean, we're giving them the best that we can. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I'll go through my files and see, I, I keep most of that stuff in one, one space. So let me see if I have it, but I, yeah, I I'm, quite, I'm quite sure. If you've got a higher quality one, Bruce, that'd be I, great. I, I'd be shocked if it is higher quality. It's probably yeah. exactly what you guys have, but I'll probably see. the same file. Yeah. All right. So we don't even know who they, who did the sign then either, right? I don't recall. Okay, I, it was, it was a long one was signed, but I don't, I don't, I can't make it out. Yeah, I don't recall who did it. Yeah. Right. Um, before we end things up, uh, Neil wanted me to bring up that uh, the town of Farmington last week went to the Inland Wetland Commission and asked them to accept a project of ours where we're basically going to be clearing trees within 10 feet of the trail from Brickyard Road to Red Oak Hill, and we're going to be repaving that area as well. Excellent. So that area will remain at 10 feet wide, but it will have brand new asphalt. The tree clearing will be done hopefully in July. Um, we did run into An, an unexpected death occurred um, at the midpoint development. Uh, one of one of the developers passed away this past weekend. Oh, um, I didn't. I didn't. I hadn't heard that. Yeah, I, uh, I I know they posted the obituary online. Um, his name was Jeff Scott. Um, may have heard that name around town, um, but he was the. The developer that was doing the the lowering of the trail and everything. So, um, as things sit in probate, we'll have to wait and see what happens. So the paving won't be immediate anymore. Okay, I think everyone got the got the email from Neil. Right? Was that to the whole board or? Yeah, I, uh, no, I think it was just you, me, and Neil. Okay. Um. 
I think he just felt like he that maybe we should know things that are going on yeah. so we can maybe give our so, yeah so basically during the tree clearing if we do it this year which who knows at this point um it would be about two to three weeks of the trail being closed between Red Oak Hill and Brickyard Road. Um, and then a uh, similar time frame for paving. Probably about a week for paving, a, a day or two to get our guys in there to prep. Um, and then they would go through mill and pave the whole section, probably in one go. It's only a little over a mile and a quarter, I think. Yeah, that sounds right to me. Yeah. Now this this tree, yeah. this tree clearing is is really just to for best it, practices to 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 clear back. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So well, that's no, that's that's. I mean, part of the problem with old trail, uh, our old trail in specific in Farmington, is that uh, there's a huge amount of pushback from the uh, the tree huggers, and and we never really prepared the shoulders correctly on, yeah, on a we, lot of our trail. And that's why, we, that's why we've got a lot of root problems that yeah. we really shouldn't have. I thought sure. that when we redid the trail, at least north of Unionville, heading up towards Burlington, that they put in like a barrier along the side. Is that true? or is... they, they did. Sure. What it, it's species specific. In fact, I wrote that. Uh, 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 so that is species specific for... Uh, uh, for poplar, uh, black locust, uh, and some of the other species that uh, that shoot out sideways uh, tap roots, yeah, that, that that go right under the tar, and so the, and so there were spots where we put in that uh, it's you know 18 inch trench and and you and you put the uh, uh, opaque fabric in and it keeps the, it, it it pushes the uh, roots down. Oh, okay, because I noticed that north of our, the Farmington border, there, that trail just goes right in the toilet all the way to the Route 4 179 parking lot. It's yeah, well, that, brutal. Part well, of that is also drainage. That's part of its drainage, but part, part of that is, is, is that's where the last project ended, was right ah, there. Okay. Yes, so, so that's why you see such a difference, yeah. But again, best practices now is to cut back a lot more than we used to. Yeah, and, and, and to be honest with you, it, it's been 30 years since that portion of the trail was built. Yep. And this was all done. So it's it's due. Yep. Which reminds me, DOT is in the throes, they still haven't done it, of announcing a, a maintenance fund for, uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, repaving certain parts of the uh, multi-use trail system across the state. And I think the first grant they're giving is to Manchester uh, for the Charter Oak. So uh, I'll keep you informed of how that's gonna work and, and who to talk okay. to at DOT. Yeah, that'd be great. That came up at the Connecticut Greenways Council meeting on uh, Tuesday morning. Was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, does anyone else have anything more to add to tonight's meeting? No. All right. Do, and then do I have a call to order? Matt, first, second, anybody? I'll second it. I'll second it. All right. We'll end the meeting at 8.30.